Welcome back to the Unarmored Talk podcast. Um, if you have been listening and watching since 2020, welcome back for you. And for those, this is your first time watching on YouTube or listening on one of your favorite audio podcast platforms. Well, welcome back to you because I hope you come back. All right. But everyone, we have an amazing guest today who's willing to have some discussions without armor. And I'll tell you guys, I've actually met Tim in person and his lovely bride. What wonderful human beings, man. We have Tim Dunn. He is, you guys ready for this? He's a primary candidate for the North Carolina Attorney General. We got Super Tuesday coming up um, on March the 5th, 2024. He's also been married for over 44 years. And he's a devil dog. Oh, uh, Mario, for, for 45 now. We just had an anniversary on January, uh, February 17th. So I did make it to 45. <laughs> she kept me that long. <laughs> and his wife, his wife, do you mind if I say her name? Do you mind if I? Uh, please, that's fine. That's fine. She's part of the his team. Wife, his wife, Susan, I love that. If we live, if we live, and Nicole and I live next to Tim and, and, and Susan, I don't think we would get anything done. But but lovely bride of 45 years. I don't, you guys know, I don't have that special button. Congratulations. <laughs> Tim, I, th I think I would save some money and get it in 2027. And, and he, and he, uh, he served 33, you know, years in the Marine Corps and as active and reserve combination package, retired as a Colonel, everyone, Tim Dunn, Tim, welcome to the show, man. Hey, thanks, Mario. Appreciate you having me on. Yes, sir. And then can you tell the listeners and viewers just a little bit about yourself, my friend? Sure. I was born and raised in Fayetteville, North Carolina. Uh, Mario, I'm kind of a military minority because I'm a Marine from an Army town. I mean, all, all my friends say, how in the heck did you get to Fayetteville? And I put my arm around my Army buddies. Now, Army folks out there, this is just in jest. But I put my arm around my Army buddies and I'll say, listen, back in the day, 1775, when the Marines formed in uh, Tun Tavern in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, November 10th, 1775, we took this land from the British and the Army wanted it so bad that we gave it to them back in about 1918 to let them use it. And we come up here with 10th Marines you know, twice a year and blow up this place. But one day, Army folks, we're going to want that back. So uh, Fort Liberty now wants Fort Bragg and you know, Fort Bragg forever. But uh, so, so born and raised in, in Fayetteville, uh, college, initially at East Carolina. Um, and then I want to play football for Pat Dye. I was just a legend in my own mind. Then I went to Carolina undergrad, uh, tried to play football again, dressed beside LT Lawrence Taylor. Uh, I figured out when I watched Lawrence Taylor, you know, run sideways in front of the pro scouts when he was there, you know, LT was 98. My locker number was 100. Uh, and I was working out as a wide receiver. Uh, you know, not too slow for a white boy, but I, you're not, not fast either. But when I saw when I saw LT run sideways faster than I could run forward and I was working out as a wide receiver, I said, dude, you need to go to school. You need to hang up this football thing. So I did. Got my grades up, went to law school, uh, Campbell Law School. And halfway through law school, Mario, you know, I, I was thinking, hey, dude, you know, you got a year and a half. You got to figure out what you want to do. So I interviewed with the Navy and the FBI and the Marine Corps. And, you know, like good Marines, there was a salty old gunnery sergeant. I didn't know what a gunnery sergeant was. My you know, my uh, dad didn't serve in World War II. Uh, he served as a in the Civil Air Patrol. His dad died from complications. My paternal grandfather in 1931 uh, from getting gas in World War One, and then I had a, an uncle that died in World War Two. I never knew them. So my dad, they wouldn't even let him serve in World War Two. Wow. So when I told the family that I was going to go in the Marine Corps, oh my goodness! But that old salty gunnery sergeant, I didn't know what a gunny was. Um, I went to the interview with the officer selection officer in Raleigh. And so this, this, he's in his, his Bravos, all the ribbons from Vietnam. This was in like 1985, 1986. And I said, hey, Sergeant. Well, he corrected me to begin with. I am not a Sergeant. I'm a Gunnery Sergeant. I said, like, okay, Gunnery Sergeant. What's this thing called OCS that I'm trying to sign up for? He stood up out of his chair, walked from his desk to me where I was sitting down, poured his finger in my face and said, they're going to kick your ass even if you survive. And I said, okay, Gunnery Sergeant, I want to do that. And Mario, they did. <laughs> that 10 week of OCS, brother, it was like Gomer Powell, the first two weeks of OCS, Gomer Powell, USMC, for you older folks out there, if you've ever seen it. But I did survive uh, and I drank the Kool Aid. And, you know, 33 years later, I finally retired. So, uh, law school, that first seven years of active duty in the Marine Corps, I was a prosecutor, uh, a, a federal Marine prosecutor. Um, and then I went with a Marine Expeditionary Unit. I was the youngest in uh, 
probably the most junior captain to, to take over as a MU SJA in 1989, 13th MUSOC. And we deployed on a typical Westpac, not knowing, you know, going for six months, going to do the typical Westpac, Okinawa, Philippines, Korea. I think we were going to do some training in Australia too, meet the Aussies. Well, yeah, we were training in the Philippines August 2nd, 1990. And those of you who were in Desert Shield, Desert Storm know that uh, Saddam and his forces went into Kuwait. I actually went to a building in, a, in Kuwait where I was checking in with, the, uh, I had my daily routine there. And, and all of a sudden, all these folks were crowded around a TV, and these tanks were rolling. I said, yo, that's a cool movie. Well, what do y'all, I've never seen that before. What's the name of that? They looked at me and said, that's not a movie. That's a Rocky tanks running, rolling into Kuwait. I'm going, whoa. So anyway, of course, we got diverted, and we were there for the duration. Um, so that was the be- kind of the initial beginning of my Marine Corps career and my legal career at the same time. Mm-hmm. You know, taking that oath, Mario, in, in uh, August 15th, 1986, I remember like it was yesterday because I had just survived I had just survived officer candidate school. And I, I, I give a lot of credit, not only to Jesus and my wife for sending me letters, but I had a rack mate that was in the ECP program, the enlisted commissioning program, and he was a sergeant. And wow. he would tell me, listen, you just listen to me and, I, and I'll get you through this. Cause I, I, I broke my ribs while I was there. I sprained my ankle. I could, for a period of time, I couldn't do pull-ups or sit-ups or climb the rope, you know? So, but that sergeant told me, listen, um, uh, OCS mentally is tougher than I, what I went through at boot camp thus far, but um, uh, physically tougher, um, m- mentally not quite as bad for him, but for me and all the new folks, it was just a wide awakening. But anyway, uh, th- there was a sergeant to help me get through that. God bless him and uh, thank the Lord that I had him as a rack mate. Uh, but that's, that was kind of the beginning of, of my passion, not only for the practice of the law. I, I went to law school, Mario, to help people. Yeah, I'm the first in my family to graduate from college. The first in my family to, to be, become a lawyer, and initially to my family's chagrin, I was the first Marine as well. <laughs> well, Tim, you you know, and let's talk. And I'm glad you mentioned the word passion. And before we jump into the topic, the next time a soldier anyone says that Marines aren't charitable, you guys heard what Tim said. We have a charitable slice, and I'll use that metaphor in our heart. We donated that land back up to where that <laughs> So Marines do have a heart. Now, you know, I love soldiers. Uh, But let's talk about this. I mean, you have been, you know, from my basic understanding and even meeting you in person, everyone, again, I've met Tim uh, in person. You can see the passion. It's not fake. And your passion for helping people of all colors, genders, races, doesn't matter. Humans are humans. Where did that passion come from in your just joy for life, Tim? I know it came from the Lord. I mean, listen, you all, you know, I've been in a lot of places in the Marine Corps, um, four combat tours, uh, Mm -hmm. you know, Desert Shield, Desert Storm in in Kuwait and the Persian Gulf, Kosovo, Iraq and Afghanistan. And certainly there's, in my mind, there's different levels of combat, but I, I, you know, and and there are those folks that were door kickers the whole time, you know, like the MARSOC and the special forces and the grunts, Lord have mercy, you know, uh, you give me a you give me a squad of Marines anytime, and I'll, I'll go toe to toe with any armed forces, uh, U.S. foreign anyway. Because you know, if you tell that PFC Lance Corporal to take that hill, you know that they're going to take that hill. They're going to die trying. But I think the passion comes from the Lord and my parents. You know, Mario. Right now, what I do in the legal practice is I represent juvenile defendants. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and one thing I've come to, to realize is number one, our juvenile justice system is broken, and these young people need help. They need guidance. And the other thing that just hit me, and it gives me chills to think about it right now is, you know, Mario, we're not, we don't choose the family we're born into. We don't know, we don't choose our parents, our family. And so I was just fortunate to, to be born into a family of, of a mom and dad that cared, you know, that they, they made me go to church. I mean, if I didn't go to church, I got my behind whooped, if you know what I mean. And so, uh, so at, at a certain point growing up, I, I chose to go on my own. So I think that passion, I know, I, mean, I remember my dad growing up and I got bullied when I was in the fourth grade. I got to tell you a quick story. I got bullied. Uh, we moved from the home that I grew up in with all my friends and all the elementary school that I went to from you know, growing up and being born from first to the third grade. Well, starting fourth grade, we had to move because um, my, my, my paternal grandmother had a stroke. So we moved in with her, which was across town in Fayetteville. And so I had new friends, new school, and I was getting bullied, you know, 
you know, terribly. I, mean, I was just, I would come home crying, but I wouldn't tell my folks what was going on. Well, what I did not know at that point is that my dad was a Golden Glove boxer in high school. So finally, he said, "Tim, I know something's wrong." And I was, I was a three of, I was the third of three boys, and my two older brothers were were much older, so they'd already moved out of the house. So I was kind of like an only child or first child at that point, firstborn. And and so finally, I broke down. I told him that what was happening at school. Well, he goes to the sporting goods store. And he gets boxing gloves for him and me. And every afternoon after he got home from work, we were in the backyard boxing. And he said, Tim, you know, you don't start fights, but man, just don't let them pick on you. Uh, and, and sometimes the, the judges and lawyers at court don't like me telling my, my children this, but you know, we have a right to defend ourselves. So he said, yeah. Tim, if they pick on you, just give them three chances. The first chance, they just leave me alone, try to walk away, you know, come home. Second time they pick on you again, they hit you, do something to you, just tell them, leave me alone. But the third time? If they hit you or touch you again, then, you know, you show them everything I've taught you. Well, that worked, Mario. I mean, on that third time, these guys that were picking on me, I just lit in on them. And, 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 and luckily, I guess it was in the fourth grade because, you know, not that anything I was anything special, but my dad had taught me how to defend myself. Mm -hmm. And I thumped them, to tell you the truth. And so from that on, I, you know, I had that, that passion and that reputation. But I didn't use it as a bully. Right. I used it as defending and protecting those that sometimes couldn't protect their, themselves. So I have used that lesson mm. from my parents and my dad throughout my life and to the least of these, my brethren and sister. Um, and, and that's one of the big reasons I became a lawyer. And then later on a Marine is that I want to help people. Uh, and, and I'm still doing that. And, and as you mentioned, I want to do that as North Carolina's next attorney general as well. Yeah. And that's, you know, and, and, and it's a choice, Tim. You know, you, you know. I mean, looking at your professional background, your experience, there's a there's many things you could choose to do in how you choose to help those who need someone like you who care in a juvenile system. Um, you know, you and I have had discussions before, and I've seen it with some of my own eyes. Uh, how some some adults have just given up on those young young ladies and gentlemen, if you will, those young adults. So thank you. And, and thank you for taking that passion from your dad and your faith in God and, you know, your Christian faith. And then, and I love how you and, say, Mario, I train not to go out and, and, and hurt people, uh, but I've trained to, to defend, but I'm going to give you a few warnings um, with that. Any. And one any thing I'll say though, is don't forget mom. Cause my, my mom was known as mama Dunn. Through, through all my friends in high school. I mean, Lord have mercy. She was just, uh, she was the one that was up every morning fixing breakfast. You know, she, she worried herself sick sometime about her children and grandchildren and family and all that, but the love that she had for us. And she, you know how sometimes dads have a little trouble showing the love, but mom, Lord have mercy. So just don't forget mama done. Oh, no, no, so it, it is, I'm glad you brought it because I was going to close with, and then mom, because, you know, I'm going to tell you, and God rest my mom. So I'm a mama's boy. And, you know, there's this is how I look at, you know, we're called Mama Dunn. Uh, there's the um, commander in chief. Uh, right. And, and then there's the ionosphere. And then there's the unknown in the galaxy. Then there's Mama Dunn. So <laughs> so hats off to that, to your mom, to your family, to your experiences. And then really to you, because it's a choice. The, the last point of discussion for this uh, discussion without armor today, because I want to let you go, because, Tim, I love talking to you. But. You being on my show is to me is is helping help people, but also I want you to get out there. Let's get let's get that seat uh, of Attorney General for North Carolina. Any Thank experiences you. while you were on active duty in the Marines that has shaped the way you serve today and the way you will serve in the future, people? Absolutely, and I got a great question. I was on a radio show. Um, African American rhythm and blues, a uh, big radio station up in Charlotte yesterday morning, and a, and a caller came on and asked, "Well, hey y'all, you know, we the other the other candidates were on there as well." Says, "Listen, you know, y'all talk this good game, but then you know when you get in the office, mm -hmm. you know, you don't do anything you say. We can't get in touch with you." And says, "How do we know you're going to do what you say you're going to do?" Well, right. what I answered was like this: I said, "Number one, you have to look." at what has happened in the past. Yeah. What, what has, what's the history of this person? What has this person done? What have mm -hmm. they said they were gonna do and they did? Well, you know, I said I was gonna become a Marine and I did. Was it easy? No. Um, I, I just happened to be in a place at a time 
where, and you all know what I'm talking about, those that have served in the service or those who are or family of service members, there were times that you did not think you could take another step. Mm-hmm. But there was someone there to help you, whether it was a, a higher being like God, whether it was your fellow Marine or soldier, sailor, airman, whether it was a family member. So uh, what the lesson I've learned in the Marine Corps is never give up, is that w- we've always done more with less. You know, we started out in a little tavern in Philadelphia. And, and every time the Marine Corps would come along, we'd have a big battle, whether it's a Revolutionary War, you know, the, the, the War of 1812, Civil War. Uh, World War One, World War Two, Vietnam, Korea. There was always folks out there say, "Hey, why do we need a Marine Corps?" Well, we need a Marine Corps because we're Marines, and when we're given that mission, we accomplish the mission. So the ability to just the the ingrained, which I think there's a little natural when every Marine, every person that wants to be a Marine, there's some natural. Uh, we're not going to give up. But then the training that we get, the camaraderie we have, the oorah, the semper fi, that you meet a Marine on the street. And you've never met them before in life, but when you find out they're Marines, men and women, there's an instant bond. There's a brother and sister there that you know you can count on. So th- through the combat zones, when you know you don't know that you're just going to live another day, yeah. um, and, and it's just that uh, that w- whatever background we came from, like you mentioned earlier, black, white, green, yellow, man, woman, right. um, super rich, super poor, middle class. We come together, we have a common element. We go through the same training. We don't care whether you're you know, the, the son or daughter of a billionaire or whether you come from the poorest family in the world, you still have to go through that same training at boot camp, Paris Island, San Diego, OCS, Quantico, and we're common, we have a bond that we build. So that Marine Corps experience for me, it, it literally, when I came back as a second Lieutenant Marines, because I had to finish my third year of law school before going on active duty, I mean, when I walked in as a United States Marine, people were going, whoa, you know, and it just gave me that not not um, not uh, um, yeah, not the kind of pride that is unhealthy. You know, I wasn't conceited. I was just, you know, I was proud to ha- I, mean, I was just thankful to survive and get commissioned a second lieutenant because that gave us, you know, it gave us the, the pride of serving, but also it gave us that sense of commitment that right. honor, courage, and commitment that we're going to do something for our country, for our community, for our state. And, and when we're called to do that, like we all have been at some point in our career, you know, I, I see young Marines now, Mario, that are all concerned that we really don't have, we don't have a war going on like Iraq and Afghanistan and stuff like that. Well, we do have Marines everywhere in, com- in combat today, but maybe it's just not a, you know, for all intents and purposes in comparison to what happened after 9-11, we're in a peacetime Marine Corps. But I tell those young Marines, be careful what you wish for, um, yeah. because... Uh, my, my motto kind of in that regard is true warriors, true warriors pray for peace, particularly mm-hmm. those that have been in that have been in battle. So uh, the Marine Corps experience for me, it, it just gave me that the, the determination, the grit, the know that we have to do it by a teamwork. We can't do it our, by ourselves. That's why I need your help. That's why I need everybody who's on this podcast. Hey, listen, look me up. Done for NC.com, D U N N F O R N C.com. Find out who I am and what I'm all about. And if you can support me, I'd appreciate that. But we have common bonds, folks that look at this, whether you're civilian, whether you're military, is just don't give up out there. Uh, there have been times in my life, Mario, that, you know, I was going from the bed to the head back to the bed because of some of the injuries that I had in the Marine Corps. You know, by right. the grace of God, I'm here. So I'm telling those folks that are listening to your podcast, you can do it too. And that, that Marine Corps experience for me knows that. Um, we never give up and we accomplish the mission and we take care of our people. We take care of ourselves. Yeah. Tim, thank you. You guys heard it. I mean, Tim, I love the way you answered that call in Charlotte and what you just said. I believe Tim, that we've voted for a lot of smart folks, um, but not folks who are wise, you know, smart is more intellect, more academic wisdom is from experience. And that's what you said. And you have both. So everyone, you, you know, again, you know, let's get behind Tim Duncan, not just for now, but forever, because we have a human being who's a professional who demonstrates the power of being smart and wise. And like you said, just look at the experience, your combat awards validate, you know, what you've been through and how you've never given up. Tim, everybody, thank you so much for listening and watching this show. Tim gave where you guys can find him. I'll put those in the, the links in the show notes. And also he's on LinkedIn as well on, on other social media platforms. 
But Tim, any any last remarks you would like to uh, give the listeners and viewers before before we depart, my friend? One thing that's been heavy on my mind a lot lately, and it just reiterates, and I was thinking about this this morning, is, you know, whatever you believe, and certainly I'm a Christian, uh, but, but I do not look down on anyone who is not. But in the good book, in Micah, um, it says, what is it that God requires of us? You know, what am I supposed to do? And it's very clear. It says, do justice, love mercy, and walk humbly with our God. And so that, that's what I'm trying to do at the next step. If I'm off, if I'm given the opportunity to serve again, uh, I'm not going to let you down. Uh, I think you can look from my history as a Marine, as an attorney, the people that I've represented, the least of these, my brothers and sisters, you know, I'm going to do the right thing. And so uh, I am going to do the best, the very best I can. And I pledge to you to work full time between now and November 5th to win this against those that are trying to take our democracy and to do justice and to love mercy and to walk humbly with my God. Amen. Thanks, man. Mark. Well, well, happy Sunday again, Tim. Thank you for coming on and blessing the Unarmored Talk podcast. But everyone, you guys know the deal. This special episode um, will be published like soon as I can, of course. But until the next episode, you guys know how to sign off. God bless. May God continue to bless you all. May God continue to bless your families and friends. Be safe out there, Tim. Thanks, Mario. Have a great day. You too, my friend.